Uh, hi everyone, and hi Giacomo. Uh, yeah, I, I, I met him for the last time. The last time I met him, uh, uh, we were in New York. So uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Yeah, I'm Timothy Tambasi, work at the Katowska University of Venice. And today, and my talk of today is about uh, integration of ontological contents in information system ontologies. Of course, I will define the meaning of integration and of information system ontologies during my talk. But before starting with my presentation, there are two things I would like to say. Uh, the first one is that it's my third talk uh, in Russia. It's also my third talk uh, online. So I hope that the next time will be an in-person talk. Uh, otherwise, my relation with Russia is uh, an online relation. And uh, the other thing is that it's not the first time that I present this talk, uh, but I think it's the last time because uh, after this talk, I have to present, uh, I have to uh, present my book proposal for Springer and uh, it will be, this uh, talk will be a, a part of the, a, a chapter about the integration in information system ontology. So I will use your question in order to improve my, my the chapter of my, of my book. So, okay. And uh, before starting, there is another point that, that I have to remark uh, is that this talk has received funding from the European Research Council and then the European Union Horizon Europe Research and Innovation Program. E here you can see the number of the uh, ERC project uh, is a project uh, on polyphonic philosophy, is a project on uh, the, represent the digital representation of manuscript uh, 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 belonging to the philosophical tradition, uh, the philosophical tradition in the medieval era, and I'm the ontologist who, who, that will present this, that will create the software in order to represent the knowledge behind the manuscript of the medieval philosophy. So, uh, I want to start my talk with the critical point because, yeah, uh, it's important to say that. Uh, yeah, uh, there is a critical point behind my reflection of today. And the critical point is the following. Well, despite the fact that information system ontologies or ISOs, I will use ISOs and information system ontologies as a synonym during this talk. Well, despite the fact that information system ontologies support the mutual understanding between human and artificial agents, well, human and artificial agents do not understand ISO's contents in the same way. And the same applies to ontological integration. Yeah, based on this critical point, uh, this talk aims to account for such a difference. So the difference between human and artificial agent in understanding ISO's contents. And in the first part, we maintain that while human agents can have access to entities represented in, a, in the information system ontologies, artificial agents cannot. Then we argue that the difference also involves the semantic web languages by which uh, information system ontologies are developed. So, don't forget that what I will present today is a philosophical perspective on information system ontologies and on computer science. And given that I work both as a philosopher and a computer science in my project. Uh, today, I'm only a philosopher that will say something about computer science, but it's a philosophical perspective. So, one point that is very, very important for me is the, the difference between uh, uh, philosophical ontology and ontology in computer science, because uh, it's very important to remark that there is a big difference and Today, I will say something about ontology in computer science that is something that is different from the meaning of ontology in a philosophical context. Well, I think that we can define the meaning of uh, ontology uh, in a philosophical context uh, in that way. Philosophical ontology is the discipline concerned with the question of what entities exist a task that is identified with that of analyzing the categorical structure of reality and drafting a complete and detailed inventory of the universe. So this is the general meaning of philosophical ontology in the analytical context. Uh, the meaning of ontology in computer science, so the meaning of information system ontologies, because ontology in computer science has the same meaning uh, uh, means 
uh, information system ontology in general, well, in computer science, ontology is an explicit and sometimes partial specification of a short conceptualization that is formalized in a logical theory. Now, I understand that the, this definition can be very hard to follow if you don't know if you don't know uh, computer science and ontology in computer science. But I think that uh, this picture uh, can help you in order to understand what I intend. So basically, when we speak about information system ontologies in computer science or information system ontologies in general, we have this kind of thing in, of things in mind. Uh, we have a, a classes of entities that which are represented in, in the picture by means of uh, uh, circles, which are connected each other by means of arrows, which represent the relation among different classes of entity. So basically an information system ontology is something like this, a set of classes of entities which are related each other by means of relations and connections. So now the real starting point of my talk, and the real starting point of my talk is the following quote from Barry Smith. Well, according to Smith, to Barry Smith, outlining an information system ontologist word means providing an inventory, an inventory of all the entities that populate such a word. Well, in my opinion, such a quote has at least two ontological implications. The first one, only those entities exist which are represented in the information system ontology. Second implication, the entities in question possess only those properties which the ISO recognizes. Well, there is another thing that uh, uh, Barry Smith uh, says in uh, the same paper, uh, because Barry Smith provides uh, an analogy between the entities belonging to a, an information system ontologies and the fictional entities, so the entities which you can find in a, in a novel. Well, the analogy is the following. It is as if Hamlet was heir, which I suppose is not mentioned in Shakespeare's play, would be not merely neither bold or not bold, but would somehow have no properties at, uh, at all as far as heir is concerned. Well, so, According to Barry Smith, this means that as well as, as for fiction, the entities represented in an information system ontology are not real entities, the entities of flesh and blood we find all around us. But, according to Smith, they are surrogates, which possess only a finite number of properties and are entirely indeterminate with regard to those properties with which the ISO is not concerned. So there is another thing that, would like to, that I would like to introduce in my paper. There are, we have uh, three things that I would like to introduce. This is the first one. Uh, I, during, my paper, during my talk, uh, I, will, I will use this example. So we should imagine to, uh, to create an information system ontology which represent all the countries in the world. So this is the basic example that I will use in, uh, in my talk. And uh, the second thing that I would like to introduce is the Carnap's distinction between internal and external questions. Well, according to Carnap, a question is internal to a framework if it may get answered by the resources provided by the framework. Therefore, about our ontology asking about the existence of a certain country, so we are talking about the ontology uh, which represents all the countries in the world, while well, asking about the existence of a certain country within the ontology uh, is a question internal to our information system ontology insofar as it concerns the existence of that country in relation to our information system ontology. Well, conversely, according to Karna, a question is external if it refers to the acceptability of the framework itself. So, asking whether a country really exists is an external question as it concerns the reality of the world presupposed by our information system ontologies. So, this is very important 
uh, for what I will say during my last part of my talk. So this difference. So, but then on this basis, what are those entities that populate our information system ontologies? Well, according to Smith, we said such entities are not the real countries where we live. Rather, they are representation, surrogates, of the real countries we, are, we have all around us. And in my opinion, what I just uh, said has two implications. Internal question involves the surrogates represented in our information system ontologies. External question referred to the real world was entities are represented in our information system ontology by surrogates. Now, the last thing that I would like to introduce. Well, uh, there is an important article in, in the debate of applied ontology that has been written by uh, Anna Goy and uh, Diego Mago that are two famous uh, ontologists in computer science uh, in Italy. And uh, also, they are also two good friends. Well, Goy and Magro argue that information system ontologies, one of the aims of information system ontologies in general, is to support the mutual understanding between human agents, between human agents and artificial agents, and between artificial agents. Of course, what they say, so the mutual understanding, does not imply that human and artificial agents understand ISO's contents in the same way. But if so, what does the difference involve? Well, in my opinion, and this is the central uh, thesis of my paper, human agents may have access to the object represented in information system ontologies contents. So the references of ISO's contents in the real world and artificial agents may not. And in my opinion, this point has one important implication, is that the mutual understanding between artificial agents is anchored to the ISO's contents in terms of representation, whereas the mutual understanding between human agents can refer to both ISO's contents and the, to the correspondence between ISO's contents and the real world. So this means that, at least for me, my opinion is that only human agents are in the position to address external questions. This is the central point of my talk. Now, uh, my talk is also about integration, but we should define the meaning of integration in the debate of uh, information system ontologies. Uh, why? Yes, because <laughs> this, uh, this, work, this workshop is about integration, and also because ISO's integration is strictly intervened with the notion of mutual understanding. Well, more precisely, Goy and, Goy and Magro maintain that the possibility for artificial agents of understanding ISO's contents enables da data integration on the web. So what is integration then? Well, broadly speaking, in general, we can say that ISO integration, integration is the process by which information system ontologies can semantically combine data from multiple heterogeneous information systems. So, now, the central question, how and to what extent are we entitled to integrate ISO's contents? Uh, well, I think that for this uh, question, we have at least three different uh, possible answers. The first one, if only the entities exist which are represented in information system ontologies, and such entities only possess the properties that the ISO itself recognizes, then integration, integrations are not possible. Second answer, if information system ontologies can semantically combine data from multiple information systems, then ISO, ISO's contents may be integrated with data coming from other information systems, data that are in turn surrogates. Now, the third answer is longer, but in my opinion, is also very interesting. So, 
Let's go back to our example. So the example that I give you at the, at the beginning of my paper, the ISOs representing all the countries in the world. Now, I want also to specify that our ISO, that the ISO are representing all the countries in the world, only represents all the countries in the world. And that information system ontology, that ISO, does not recognize the property as, as capital. Now, on the basis of the previous slides, we can say that only all the countries of the world exist in the information system ontologies. And those countries are not the real countries, but they are surrogates. Those surrogates do not possess the property has as capital, although the real countries possess such a property. Now, let's go back to the analogy of Barry Smith. According to Smith, we should maintain that as regards to the property as as capital, our uh, ISO's countries are indeterminate. However, I suggest that such an indeterminacy improperly refers to ISO's countries, given that the ISO does not take into account the property as as capital. Rather, the countries are indeterminate about the property as as capital if we compare that, that, those uh, countries to the real world whose countries possess such a property. So, in my opinion, and now I'm very close to the conclusion, accepting such a line of reasoning means that the indeterminacy mentioned implies a relation between ISO's contents and the world represented by the information system ontologies. But, but, if so, a chance to make our information system ontologies entities determinate about the property as, as capital may consist in integrating the entities of our information system ontologies with the property as a capital that the real countries possess, but then integration from the external world would be at least in principle possible. While accordingly facing the integration required to specify whether answering by the internal resources provided by the information system ontologies or by the external world represented in the information system ontology by surrogates. While well, outlining such alternative, in my opinion, does not imply that human artificial agents could integrate ISO's contents in the same way. Again, the difference refers to the fact that human agents have access to the external world represented in the information system ontology by surrogates and the artificial agents have not this possibility. So, the conclusion, but it's not uh, the real conclusion because there is uh, other two things that we would like to say. Uh, we might conclude by observing that while artificial agents, uh, while for artificial agents, ISOs in, ISO integration are tied to the internal resources, human agents can integrate the ISOs contents in terms of internal and external resources. This might also explain when we look at the ISOs contents, we as human agents do not see just surrogates, but also the entities represented in the ISOs. Well, I told you that I presented this uh, talk uh, in, in several occasions before uh, this workshop. And I remember that uh, in China, mm, I received this beautiful, in my opinion, very smart uh, remark. Well, mm, a professor in China said, artificial agent equipped with the artificial perception, sensor, and so forth, could have access, at least in principle, to the references of ISO's contents in the real world. Well, I totally agree with her. But, in my opinion, to the extent that having access to the reference of ISO's contents in the real world may differ across human and artificial agents, and above it all, currently the largest majority of artificial agents are not equipped with artificial perception, sensor, and so forth, the remarks does not apply to their all artificial agents. This is the reason why I have decided to follow my intuition, even if by artificial agents, I do not consider all those art, uh, artificial agents equipped with artificial perception sensors and so forth. And uh, last point, uh, there is another thing that is very important for me to remark, uh, that I start my, paper, uh, my talk uh, with this, with the, the, the quote, with the, the quote that you can see in this slide from Bear Smith, uh, According, uh, who say that outlining ISO's world means providing an inventory of all 
the entities that populate such a world? Well, in my opinion, the quote, that is the starting point of my talk, is not accepted by the entire community of computer scientists. The quote, and, and, and also my talk, assume the closed world assumption, according to which everything that is not inferred or not to be true in the ISOs must be considered false. Here, you can see the implication that uh, follows that follow from Barry Smith quote. Well, be before concluding, there is also to remark that other IT approaches assume the incompleteness of ISO's conceptualization. And the incompleteness is formally stated at the open world assumption, according to which everything that cannot be inferred as false from an ISO must be considered unknown. So for the open world assumption, the quote does not hold. So uh the the quote uh, the, the, does not talk yeah and com and consequently one and two that you can see at the in the first part of the slide should be the retract so i think that uh, uh it's what i present today is very important if you want if in my case i have to create my uh, my home my my own information system ontologies for manuscript for the for manuscripts uh, also because uh, um, we should decide what to put inside the the, uh, the information system ontologies and the other thing that people can integrate only by their knowledge of the external world that's all and thank you for your time thank you so much so we have eight minutes for questions any questions please Uh, hi Timothy, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh hi, yeah, it's good to see you. Ciao. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm here in Ekaterinburg, but I'm on my laptop. So thanks you for the talk. I I actually I don't know this subject, so it was very interesting to me to get to know more. Um, so I have two questions. The first is maybe just a clarification because at the beginning of your talk you showed um map that was supposed to exemplify what is ontology in computer science mm -hmm. and if I'm not mistaken there were like different colors like dark blue green light blue and I was wondering if it's if these colors have a meaning if maybe there is usually a hierarchy of these colors I don't know represents different types of entities in a system so that's just more of a curiosity question that I have about this topic and the second question I have is I was wondering if, um, how can I put it, if, um, well, let's say your main thesis and of course, and uh, you're making this distinction between internal and external questions about um, an ontology, as you call it. I was wondering if this is just an instance of this idea that every time we try to model reality, let's say with a theory, we always simplify things. I don't know, take uh, game theory, for instance. We, it's supposed to model reality, but of course, we focus on certain factors and we leave out other parameters, for instance. And in a sense, maybe one could say every theory is like, uh, how to say, again, focuses on certain aspects for, of reality and leaves out other aspects. So I was wondering if this specific case you discussed is an instance of this phenomenon, so to say, or it's a special case. I don't know if my second question makes sense. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Ah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. About your first question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, there is a, a hierarchy in general, but uh, but there is also something that is that everyone accepts in computer science, and that basically there is a difference between uh, uh, classes entities belonging to a class and uh, relations. So we can have a hierarchy of relation of classes and also of entities, but in general, the classes uh, and uh, entities belonging to a class and relation are the basic uh, unit of our in co computer science or com ontology in computer science. So yeah, it's, it's strong for ontological perspective, but uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's uh, yeah, it's, mm, it's it commonly accepted in, in the debate. Uh, about your second uh, 
question. Uh, my answer is yes and no. Uh, uh, so yes, mm, okay, it depends because uh, I think that we can create a, 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 an, an information system ontologies for everything. So, uh, if uh, because okay, in general we present uh, we create an, an information system ontology with a, with a specific perspective and uh, for a specific aim. So in that case, yes, it's the same thing that we have for a theory in, in philosophy. Yeah, there, it's a simplification in some case. Maybe it's something that works very well in a specific context. But in general, the idea is also to put together all these ontologies in order to create uh, an ontology which represent our uh, knowledge of the world. And it's something that uh, artificial agents have to learn in order to think like a human being. So it depends. Uh, but, uh, and in my opinion, the there is something that does not work in this kind of uh, um, in, 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 in the debate is is because we are very focused uh, in uh, create something that computers that uh, artificial agents can learn, but we as human beings are not very excited to learn how uh, artificial agents uh, think if they think. But yeah. There is only a, 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 a relation between us and uh, them, and not between them and us. And, and us. So it's and some points uh, are missing for in, in my opinion. So this is why in this period I'm working about how what we can learn from uh, uh, from art, artificial agents. So okay. I don't. Okay. I don't <laughs> Thank you, Timothy. Yeah, too bad you cannot join us for drinks tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, see you. See you. Uh, as you can see, Asman wants to ask questions. Asman, please. Uh, Timothy, thank you very much for your um, um, presentation. I'm not working on, on that part of the philosophy, but uh, I just wonder what you think about uh, how I look at it. I mean, uh, there are three answers that you presented. And uh, I guess I'm partial on the first, on the side of the first answer and partial on the side of the third answer. The reason is this, whenever I uh, see a debate on artificial intelligence and all these uh, perceptors and kind of things that we attach to them so that they can um perceive the world around themselves in more and more precise way but no matter what we do the semantic content must be defined by us in any ways i mean we need to make it precise for example think of this question um what does it mean to taste a chili pepper now we have a answer for this uh question and even if we had a, a computer that analyzes all the components of a chili pepper and uh, maybe he has a list of all the um, uh, components that can be um, felt by the receptors at our tongues, maybe that way he might answer. But all in all, he will not, I mean, that, that computer will never know it the same way we know it, despite that the semantic overlap or descriptive overlap about the uh, taste of a chili pepper or the experience. So I think um, I'm not pessimist about developing um, artificial intelligences that can operate at higher levels. And But um, um, all in all, it all, I think, uh, boils into the claim that um, it's still on our shoulders as a work to be done. I mean, specifying all the um, um, semantic content and also making them precise and making them able to, and making the computers able to um, 
one way or another perceive the world outside of themselves so would you comment on this or what would you i mean or wouldn't you like about this perspective um I, I, okay i i think that your point uh, is very smart and non not but but and um there is one only one thing that um, i think that they could remark uh, uh that they can remark is um is that uh, okay mm, i think that information system ontologies is uh, are about communication about uh cons concern in general the communication between human agents between human agents between human agents and artificial agents and between artificial agents mm, about the mutual and um, yeah, I, I use the, the notion of mut mutual understanding in general, but I'm not yet because it's something that the, the debate on inform in information system ontology use in general. Yeah, it, it's it's very used. It's common in the debate on information system ontology, but I don't think I don't think that the notion of understanding is something. It, it it's something uh, that in this specific period of time is something that we should use. Maybe it's about communication because understanding is stronger than communication. Maybe we can say something to, to, to a computer and maybe a computer can give us an answer. But it's not I don't know. I, I use the technical term mutual a mutual understanding, but I'm not a, a big fan of the of the term. So I don't know if I it's an answer to your question. But yes, actually, I I apparently I was not clear about the um, the difference between communication and understanding. Actually, what I'm asking is a very I mean I'm I'm using a very deeper. Um, word understanding or maybe feeling or making sense of so you're right in in terms of communication yes that's right I and mean, there are a lot of reasons to be optimist but for the other part well it will apparently take a lot of time if it's possible ever yeah but also because i, I i'm not sure that the communication works very well also for for uh, different human agents in general I think it's something that uh, we should also we should also decide what is a, the communication between different human beings because I I don't think that the communication always works for different human beings so I I think we should define the meaning of communication the, the real meaning of communication and then we can ask the same answer to the, to, to 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 uh, artificial agents. That, that's right. I think I mean, Port Royal logicians do the same thing. You know, before we talk, let's talk about our uh, concepts. Let's define them so that we are understand. I mean, we are um, meaning the same thing when we mention that uh, concept, and then we can uh, continue our talk. So you're right on that. Yes, you're right. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Timothy. Well, uh, 